is the Glass Cannon Network. Good evening, folks. It's Friday night, and it's time for chaos. Contrary to popular belief, I did not die after last week's session, but I felt like I did. Uh, And as long as I don't laugh at anything tonight, I won't cough. But I do find that if I laugh, I I still cough. So please, don't be don't be humorous tonight, my friends. Done and done. Yeah, not a problem. I feel like a laugh's coming on right now. Uh, no, I, uh, that was, that was really rough last week. And I was telling everybody right before we started that like right after that session, I stayed up all night coughing and it spiraled into like an awful sickness that lasted six days, six days. I had to like cancel recordings. It was a big old mess, but, uh, I'm back and I couldn't be more excited, uh, to jump in tonight because it's just, you guys got through a ton of stuff last week. We got through, I had 20 pages of notes and you got through pretty much all of it. Um, so I'm really excited to jump back in. Before we do, uh, during the little get to know each other phase, what's everybody watching on TV these days? Do you still watch the old, the old small screen? Uh, my wife and I just finished the the first half of uh, the last season of Ozark. Do you guys watch Ozark? I watched the first couple. Couldn't get into it. I, I liked the first, and then I, I just kind of I lost interest in it at some point. <sighs> Give it a chance. Go back. It's fantastic. Right. It's really, really good. If you like Jason Bateman, I mean, you can't go I wrong. Do. Laura yeah. Linney, the cast, all they got all these little actors. They're fantastic. Uh, I can't recommend it highly enough. And they're coming out with the the end. Uh, in like, uh, well, actually, by the time this airs, it'll already be out. But I'm excited about it. Well, what are you watching these days, Nora? Do you have time for uh, television? Do you do you lower yourself to our standards to watch TV? <laughs> hey, listen, if I get a free moment, I'm definitely watching TV. I just don't have that much time. But uh, I and I'm a couple of episodes behind. But Moon Knight is chef's Moon Knight. Yeah. yeah, that's yeah. what I'm uh, enjoying these days. I haven't seen it, but I was a big Moon Knight comic book guy. I've got all, I still got all my old Moon Knights. And then I oh, yeah? got back into it like 10 years ago when they uh, made new ones. Um, is this, the show's good? I imagine it's Oscar Isaac. He, he's yeah. like got the Midas yeah, touch. It's, it's really good. Uh, and, you know, as, as an Arab, I like seeing other Arab directors, performers, protagonists. So it's, it's been nice. Yeah. That's cool. Uh, Kate, I know you have a impeccable taste when it comes to television and, and film, cinema, yep. as you would yep. call it. Um, what, uh, what are you watching these days on the, very, on the very tube? highbrow. Well, Michael and I, on Saturdays, we have a tradition of we order sushi and we watch TV. Um, so we just finished Mandalorian and um, mm. The Dropout. And just the last couple days, I've been binging the entire season of Summer House um, so what's that? It's this really, really highbrow show on Bravo, uh, Bravo TV, hmm. a bunch of like hot people get together and go to the Hamptons every weekend okay. and party together and like make out with each other and fight. And <laughs> it's great. Oh, yeah, it's based on a true story. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> reality. It's, re- it's, it, it's reality TV. The uh, realest reality. <laughs> Uh, I might want to watch that. Is it really good? Is it like, uh, have you seen the ultimatum on Netflix? This one, this is, this is one of the more ridiculous ones. So there's Uh, different flavor of highbrow reality and the ultimatum 
is probably the lowest. It's the lowest of the low. <laughs> Do you, have you guys seen this? Have you heard about is this? Is it lower than the one where people got dressed up in like prosthetic makeup, like lizards and, and, and dolphins parrots and, stuff? and had to date yeah. each other? It's low. It's what? lower than that. That one at least had a hook. This okay, one is point. there's couples that are like they're one of them, one of the people in the couple is giving the other one an ultimatum, like either we get married or we break up. Oh, you know, relationships always one. go well when that That's happens. It's always a good basis. And so, I like smutty train wrecks. <laughs> oh, you wait. Wait till you see what happens next. So they put seven of these couples in a retreat together and they break up from their significant other and date everyone else in the village to see if they're really meant to be with the one that gave them the ultimatum. It's like Love what Island to like a level that you didn't know you could reach. Amazing. Mm -hmm. Wow. We're, we're so close with like reality television as psychological torture to just like... <laughs> To just it, it'll be most dangerous game in like right. two years. Oh yeah, we're yeah. so close to like Total Recall, RoboCop, like yeah. all those moments that are like sat satirical future yeah. show commercials. It's like we're there. It's yeah. Oh, yeah, the yeah. Running yep. Man. It is, yep. There's going to be live death. You're going to be rooting for death in Climbing about for dollars three to five happening. years. Yeah. Uh, what are you watching these days, Ross? Mostly snuff films. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you know me. This this closet behind me is full of uh, full of super eight spindles of like horrid things reels. that should not be viewed by man. Uh, no, no, no. It's a lot of cigarette burns ass stuff back there. No, I, uh, the only television show that's, that I've that I've like got obsessed with lately is this one on Apple TV called Severance. Um, I yeah. love it. I just it's it's great. Um, I heard it's great. phenomenal. It's, it's really, it's a really cool, unique um, sci-fi story with um, with with some hot themes about our our contemporary world, and um, yeah, that that is the one that that I'm the watching deliberately. But like, there is a show that I kind of like pops on kind of ambiently that I find myself watching if if the television is just kind of on when the television is tuned to a Korean channel that's on our on our television. I more than more than very often come across a show called My Little Old Boy. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like the proper translation. No, I haven't. I have. I, I've never. I've never seen it subtitled or anything. But I've gleaned that what it is. It's a panel of moms and grandmothers who watch their sons and grandsons go through their daily life and just kind of like observe them and like give commentary. <laughs> Whoa. Wow. My little old boy. So it's reality television is what you're saying? It's, exactly, it's precisely that. Yeah. <laughs> wow. And wait, now how do you, you just have a, your uh, cable package just comes with the Korean channel? It just comes with, yeah, yeah. It's one of, one of many channels. That's yeah. phenomenal. Uh, my little old boy. Uh, it sounds like an anime. Uh, I, uh, yes. I just love yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Rob? What are you watching these days? You a big TV guy? Uh, I'm not as much as I should be. Uh, usually because I just get, um, like really uh, envious. Like if I'm watching good television, I was like, I just want to kind of be on that. Right. Know? Yeah. Um, but we, and I'm also not good at watching multiple things at once. So we either drill down on one or we're not watching anything, but we started watching, there's an American version of it now called ghosts, but the, there's a BBC version called ghosts. Um, so we started watching that because it wouldn't be me unless I could say, well, the British one is better. Um, <laughs> so I want to make sure that that's true. And we've been like blowing through it. I mean, the BBC shows are amazing because every season is like six episodes or seven episodes. So you can be like, I did three seasons in a week. Fuck you. Wait, um, is this that, that's not that CBS show where the woman like lives in a house with ghosts. Yeah, it's, so it it's is? that. It's the, that it's looks the original, terrible. I know, but it's the original format of it. Um, and the pilot is a pilot. So, you know, you kind of get through it. Mm -hmm. But then it like it takes off. It's amazing. Like all really? the, they're juggling. I mean, honestly, for 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 us as as role players or whatever we're doing, um, like ensemble <laughs> work, right? It is an amazing ensemble comedy. Like the way that the writers, especially, have managed to juggle. I mean, there's I think six ghosts, and then the couple that lives there. It's essentially like a multicam sitcom. It's it's just one location, um, but every character in every episode has their own mini arc. Like they're able to somehow juggle every single person having like, it's not just a story, B story, C story. It goes up it's to like, F story and G yeah, story. D E F G. Like it, they hit on everybody. 
throughout every episode. It's awesome. Wow. See, now, if you had never told me that, just it look, it's marketed so poorly because they make it look like this Wednesday. Yeah. And a guy comes in yeah. with like the Steve Martin arrow on his head. Yep. And he got yep. killed by an arrow. And I'm like, yep. what is this nonsense? Yeah. Uh, okay. Well, maybe I got to check that out. So uh, there's a couple the, good I, actors on the there. The CBS I'm like, one might be awesome, too. Uh, but the 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 BBC one, it's been it's been uh, really wonderful. And, and if you watch the credits, it says created by like six people, and I think they're all the ghosts. Like I I don't know if they were a comedy group. Get or out what, of here! Oh, that's cool. I recognize one of the guys, Simon Farnaby, was has done a lot of like British alt comedy and stuff. But it, it's it's really fun. Well, there you have it. Your TV recommendations. Um, if if those of you are just tuning in to get your TV recs, you can you can take off. Uh, we're gonna play Later. some Call of Cthulhu now uh, for the real fans. Um, I think we lost a lot to Summer House, though. They've all I mean. they've all run to tune into that. Uh, I I don't want to do a long recap of last week, but we got through a lot, and uh, you know I'm, I'm sure you guys could took copious notes, um, but. There was just a lot of things that went on, so I'm just going to kind of briefly touch base on what happened and then pick up uh, at this climax that we ended on. So you've all come to Peru, Lima, uh, specifically Peru, to meet up with a gentleman named Augustus Larkin. Uh, there had been a ton of international press about uh, an expedition uh, that he was looking for people to join to discover a lost civilization, these pyramids somewhere uh, in Peru. And for whatever reason, each of you uh, was attracted by this prospect. Um, we mentioned last week that some of you, your reasons may be more overt, more obvious, more uh, you wear it on your sleeve, or at least the reasons that you want everyone to know. Um, but probably all of you have secret reasons as well, be it for wealth, uh, for uh, moving forward in your academic field, or something maybe darker. Uh, but you've all traveled out here uh, to Lima, Peru, and you meet at the Bar Cordano, um, it's March, it's summer in Peru, it's hot. Uh, you meet up, you get to the table, and Augustus Larkin is there with his his manservant, this guy, uh, de Mendoza, Luis de Mendoza, and uh, an American man uh, named Jesse Hughes, uh, who's a folklorist, at least that's what uh, how he's introduced at the time, who's also joining the expedition just like you. You sit down, you start talking to him, and he basically explains he was uh, in an area uh, in the highlands, and he was talking to some local people, and and he met this alpaca farmer, uh, alpaca farmer, whose grandfather found these relics on this alleged pyramid site. He bought the relics off this guy, and the grandfather said that there was a ton more there, but he never wanted to go back because he was like afraid that the area was cursed and that even him taking these things had cursed him, blah, 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 blah. But come to find out, these are valuable items from like the 5th and the 16th century. Uh, one of you uh, was able to determine, I think, Margot, um, with your archaeology check. Um, and so if there are more items there, this could be a huge payday, not to mention a major discovery um, uh, of a lost pyramid here in Peru and a lost civilization. Um, you know, the as the conversation wears on, uh, he looks, the uh, Larkin looks like he's getting a little sick, uh, a little under the weather. You question him on it, and he's like, well, truth be told, I've been suffering with mala from malaria for a long time. I grew up in Kenya. I got it there. Uh, and it's just, I'm going to, I'm going to call it a night, but it, it's, we're leaving Monday morning. I've hired a bunch of trucks. Uh, meet me there. Um. Uh, Bye. And so him and De Mendoza peace out. De Mendoza, meanwhile, all night long is kind of giving you dirty eyes and especially given uh, this American Jesse Hughes dirty eyes. But they leave. Jesse Hughes uh, says, why don't we hang out and chat at the bar? He reveals that his name isn't Jesse Hughes. It's Jackson Elias. And he's not a folklorist. He's an author, an author who specifically is interested in death cults. He just wrote a book called The Black Power, which Vaughn, Ross's character, uh, shockingly read uh, from a, a luck roll. So you're familiar with his work uh, writing about uh, cults. And he thinks that 
Larkin and de Mendoza are somehow tied up in this Peruvian death cult that over centuries has been misinterpreted as like vampires running amok, Siri running amok throughout the highlands of Peru. He thinks that these things go all the way back to the conquistadors and that some cult arrived with the conquistadors and has sur survived all the way to the present day. This just making human sacrifices. And somehow de Mendoza and Larkin are tied into this because while he was researching his book out there, he kept hearing about de Mendoza. Some people even said de Mendoza was a Siri. Now he doesn't believe in any of that stuff, but he thinks that de Mendoza is a key figure in this cult and somehow Larkin is tied up into it. So this expedition is a, is a dangerous one for all of us, but yet the prospect of riches, the prospect of knowledge is still very, very important. So he wants to go along with it, but he wants all of you to be on the same page. He says, tomorrow I'm going to meet this professor uh, at uh, a museum nearby, uh, and he's been trying to join Larkin's expedition, and Larkin has been rebuffing him. Let's go talk with him. He knows a lot about the area. So you go to the museum the next day. Uh, Feruz, Nora's character, shows up early and is looking at the gallery and is approached by a, uh, a graduate student there, uh, a woman named Trinidad Rizzo, I believe. And she seems, she's so excited, you can tell she's just, she loves what she does. And as, as a fellow student, I'm sure uh, you can appreciate her uh, enthusiasm uh, for for this work and she's like i'm so sorry i i must go I'm, I'm, I'm my teacher is waiting for something and so she takes off you guys meet with professor sanchez and sanchez tells you what uh what jackson elias tells you that basically he heard about this expedition he wanted to be involved because this is his jam like lost civilizations in peru he's heard about this pyramid in fact they even found a document dating back to the conquistadors that it somehow is going to offer information that would be invaluable to this expedition and he and his graduate assistant trinidad rizzo are just about finished translating it she just went down to the storeroom to get one more thing where is old trinidad he says so you guys offer to go uh introduce yourselves to her and just uh tell her that you're there and you want to check this out you go down into this dark storeroom you notice that the door is open uh, Vaughn and Feruz walk all the way down to the end of the first aisle. You see boxes of uh, artifacts have been overturned and lying in a pile underneath these boxes is the body of Trinidad Rizzo, who looks completely emaciated, almost mummified, completely desiccated and dry with a huge circular disc hole ripped off her chest. A little bit of business here. Start of a new session. Let's do a luck roll to see if anyone recovers luck. And uh, what we at least determined before this session, whether you used luck or not, you still got a chance to recover luck. So, you know, use that luck economy. So a way a luck, luck roll works is you roll, and if you roll higher than your luck score, you recover 1d10 points. If you roll uh, at or below your luck score, you don't recover luck this session. And we're rolling this regardless of whether or not we spent luck in the last episode? This is what uh, what we've determined. Uh, that could be wrong, but for this session, we'll go with it. Um, because ultimately, you're going to need this luck. And so Shoot. even if you get, you're up to 99, there might be sessions you're like, I'll spend 60 luck because you have to make that roll. So, okay. And it's a D10, you said? Uh, a D10 if you, if you, if you uh, roll over your luck. Yeah. Did anybody okay. uh, make it? Did everybody make it? Yes, mm -hmm. Hell yeah. I, re I gained six luck points. Okay, Ross, you, uh, Vaughn, Vaughn's not feeling lucky. No. Uh, but Kate and Rob, you both made it as well. What did you guys recover for Margot and Carter? I got 10. You got oh, 10? Man. Yeah. I got seven. You got seven. Mm -hmm. And Kate, you spent, uh, I think 12 last yeah. week. And oh, so wow. nice, you got most of it back. See, pays yeah. to spend. Mm -hmm. Um. All right, so we got the luck back. 
I also, I think I did this after the session. I've put some pictures in the sidebar here. Uh, uh, I've revealed to you what Augustus Larkin looks like, what Luis de Mendoza and Jesse Hughes, who is now, you know, Jackson Elias, uh, Professor Nemesio Sanchez, uh, Trinidad Rizzo before the desiccation and hole in her chest, uh, and as well as some other things there. So, uh, you know, feel free to make notes there if you're like, oh, you know what? I want to just keep this in mind. Uh, I want to really uh, use Roll20, Roll20's functionality as much as possible. Uh, anyways, so the way we kind of figured it out is that Vaughn and Feyruz were the ones that got there first. This state that you see her in is going to provoke a sanity roll. And what I've decided is if both of you fail that sanity roll, then Carter and Margaret will roll it as well. But if at least one of you passes, you have the choice to be like, stay back, don't look at this thing. But if both of you fail, I'm going to say you don't have the ability to warn them. Uh, so right now, just Vaughn and uh, Feruz roll a sanity check and you want to get at or under your sanity. And if you don't, well, then a couple things are going to happen. Oh boy. I rolled a 56 under 60. Ooh, oh, just oh. made it. Oh, Huge. I, I rolled a 54 over 35. <laughs> Oh, 54 over 35. All right, it's early in the night. That's a, That would be a lot of luck uh, to, to try and uh, take. You want to just not worry about it? Let's take it. Let's just take, take it. Heat. Okay, so here is what is going to happen. You, sometimes, even if you succeed on a sanity roll, you take sanity loss. In this case, you don't. So, Feyruz, you're okay. Over Ross, you take... 1d6 sanity. I'm going to have you roll it. If you okay. roll a 5 or higher, we have to talk, young man. Uh-oh. All right. Let's see. Uh, I rolled a 4. Okay, Ooh. you're fine. You are fine. So, you take four points of sanity loss, though. Obviously not fine. Had you taken five or more, if you take five or more in one hit, you then have to roll an intelligence check to see if you understand the full brunt of what you're seeing. Yes. And if you uh, fail, the, or uh, actually, if, if you fail that check, you're fine. You don't understand it. If you succeed on that check, you understand the full brunt of this horror, and you have a, a, a bout of madness. Uh, in this case, you do lose some sanity, but because Feyruz was able to succeed, Feyruz, you can tell them, like, stay back. What do you guys do? Um. What? Marco starts walking up, I guess. Yeah, what's, everything all right in there, guys? <laughs> and I do think- Do you need any uh, help? Uh, yes, 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 we do. Yes, and, yes, oh. we need help. And you're seeing Vaughn right bon sort of slumping against the the uh, um, pulling at his at his jacket and like kind of unbuttoning his his uh, clothing. I think we'd mentioned that he had like a, a split second flashback as a veteran of the of World War One, like this this like rasping uh, breath that was coming from the storeroom. Suddenly he was right back, like seeing the green cloud coming towards them and seeing like fumbling gas masks on and hearing that same eerie respiration like through masks and seeing this he's suddenly just like <gasps> panicking cold sweat breaking out as as he suddenly realizes that he, he I, don't, I don't have my mask <laughs> like damn you what are we you, you doing if you don't fumble it on damn you we're all gonna die it, I, is Vaughn having an asthma attack? What's going on? We're I, coming in. I, I just, I just saw her. I just, I just saw her earlier today. Is there someone was... there? Okay. Well. So, so uh, Carter, <laughs> Carter starts walking in. I guess. <laughs> like, what's that big pile of uh, garbage on the floor there? Carter walks up, and you see this woman <laughs> see her she just looks like everything has been drained from her body she's just like skin barely uh like stretched taut over her uh skeletal structure and a huge gaping hole on her chest give me a sanity roll god damn it <laughs> no you guys are gonna tell us not to come in <laughs> they're too much they're too in shock all right 
I want to roll under. Yeah, under sanity. your sanity. Obviously, which I'm going to do right now. I rolled, yes, a nine. Ooh. Oh, a nine, so you're great. You're able to hold it together, um, and you see Margo doo, 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 walking up behind you. What is going on over here? You guys are all acting very, very silly. Yeah, I don't know what their problem is. This is, this is dead wolf. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I feel like at this point she definitely like walked all the way in and, okay, and sees. So you see this as well, and you see that Feyruz is just standing there in shock, and Vaughn looks very shook as well, leaning against uh, one of these shelves. Um, you also see like there's a uh, a wooden crate next to her that's been smashed to pieces, and and the way that the crate kind of hit the ground, uh, it looks like the top has been pulled off of it, like the damage from the crate wasn't entirely due to the fall, like someone maybe forced it open. Um, there's straw sticking out of it and, and, and poking out from the straw is like a large piece of worked gold. Um, but then you look down at the body and that provokes a sanity roll. Here we go. 65 under 85. Guys, pull it together. Holy mold, your sanity is... Yeah, I rolled high on that for some reason. She's, she's a very sane artist. <laughs> <laughs> um, huh. Terribly sorry for the shock, but I think it's probably understandable under the circumstances. Only too shame-making, what? How, how, could, how could this have happened? I just saw her earlier today. You knew uh, her? Well, not personally, but I saw her upstairs. I, know, I only uh, spoke to uh, her forensic. briefly, but scientist here, uh, if that even exists at this point, uh, but uh, I would guess that the cause of death would be this circular uh, chunk of missing flesh here. You don't really see that every day. Uh, God, what would have made that? Could I l just lean down and do like a spot hidden? Just kind of check out this situation. Yeah. Like, does it does it look like there may have been that weird mark that we saw, or or anything? You know, just a general. Yeah, yeah. Give um, a go ahead and give a spot hidden. Let's pull up my skills here. What do I and need all to of you can roll that too. You guys are kind of you're you're investigating this. There's blood everywhere as well. Oops. Nope, I rolled an 84. <laughs> Ooh, 47 you just under 50. Fall directly into the hole in her chest. <laughs> uh, 47 <laughs> under 50? I was wondering, yeah, I was wondering if, like, is this like a perfect circle carved out of her chest? And, like, about uh, that. It's, it, no, you, you know, it doesn't look like perfect, but it is definitely circular. Um, like, that's the uh, sort of overriding shape, but it's not like a geometrical perfect circle. Um, so, did anybody else pass the spot hidden? No, no. just miss it. All right, so Margo, again, now two ups in a row, rolling hot. Uh, you see a couple things. You see, like, uh, there's a notebook sticking out of uh, her jacket pocket that's lying next to her. Um, and you do see on that piece of gold that's sticking out of the box what looks like uh, freshly burned remains of skin. Um, and then there's also uh, uh, just blood all over the place around her that looks like it was moved around. Um, the like stepped the, in? Yeah, perhaps stepped in. The bird skin sounds really interesting, but I think she's going to reach for the notebook first. Okay. You reach for the notebook and... Uh, you see that the top of the page that was probably the one that she was uh, working on says the, the final confessions of Gaspar Figueroa. Um, now, I don't know what, uh, how, how urgent you are, uh, like want to do anything right now, but I'm going to reveal it to you um, on roll 20 and you'll see the, the note here. Yeah, she'll probably take time to read it later. Um, even though I passed my sanity, I feel like this is a lot and shaken. So she says, oh, uh, I guess we, I f th this notebook here, it might be useful, uh, uh, but look, there's blood all over the ground. 
at all directions and in this crate. It, it, what is this? It smells like burnt skin. We should have a look around. Hmm. There's no way that this, this is not natural. <laughs> she, she clearly died of natural causes. <laughs> clearly. Yes, I, I suppose the young lady wasn't a thousand years old when you saw her this morning. Um, and uh, Vaughn is just looking at, she looks, she just looks totally desanguinated and like sucked dry. Mm-hmm. What about- Tell you what that looks like, friends. Vampire death. That guy was talking about vampires. Uh, I mean, uh, what are we looking at here? This, there's no blood, apart from the well, copious amount we're stepping in currently. Yeah, Don't I mean, it does sound similar to what you heard. Um, however, this disc missing from her chest doesn't seem to match up with any vampire tales you know of. You know, maybe vampires down here, they go straight for the sternum. Could be a, could be that variety. And perhaps instead of um, two uh, slender canines, we're working with one giant tusk. Yeah, or like, um, maybe you know what would be cool is if decades from now there's a movie where vampires have uh, open up like this and latch on, and it could be called Blade Two. I'm just riffing. Just a uh, Venus flytrap mouth. Mm-hmm. Fun, fun times, okay. Sometimes um. I just have thoughts like that, guys, sorry. I'll write it down in my little uh, journal. Um, since we're on the topic of it, and and since Vaughn has seen wounds before, though he's not a a medical man, I wanna get, get up close to that wound and see, does this look as though it was made by a blade, or because we're talking about it, and it's like rubbish, there's no, it's not like biological thing to make, make such a thing. Um, you'd see, Teeth marks, for example, if, if it was that sort of wound. And do I see teeth marks, or does this look like the the work of uh, um, tooth or blade? All right, so you look in there. Do you have a do you have any medicine skill or uh, you know, even first, first aid. aid? Yeah, first aid. Give me a first aid roll. I'll be darned. I made it. Twenty seven hundred thirty. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah. So. You look into this circle, I mean, it's really horrifying, and so you're kind of steeling yourself against this since you were already shook from Mm -hmm. the loss of sanity. And you do notice that around the uh, circumference of the circle, jagged marks that look like something kind of latched on to tear this circle out, and they go all the way around. If this was a blade, it's of, n- of no origin that I'm aware of. Oh. Huh. Why would anybody want to do this? I, this Did this you? seems to be the work of nothing so much as some sort of eel. Um, taking a look around, could I, and having, um, having heard mention of the gold items. Can I take a look, closer look at that? Yeah. Um, so Margot tells you there's traces of what looks like burnt skin on this thing uh, that's sticking out of the box that appears to have been pried open. Um, if you reach down, uh, do you pull it out to examine yeah. it? Yeah. Okay. Um, you pull it out and it's just a single length of worked gold, maybe about two feet long, a few inches wide, uh, a third of an inch, like a centimeter deep. Um, both of the ends of it are rough, um, like maybe it was taken out or ripped from something larger, a larger design. Um, it's hefty, um, weighs like maybe a little over 20 pounds. Um, so it's not like a weapon. Um, it's largely straight. Um, although four sections of it jut out in, at right angles into short spurs, or, or, or there's a couple of them that uh, like are squared off spirals. And also the surface is imprinted with a series of non-repeating geometric shapes, mostly squares and rectangles. 
you're a, a student of cryptology, this doesn't jump out to you as anything you've seen without even rolling a check. Um, mm -hmm. None of these shapes resemble any any form of writing that you've ever read about. What I would like to do, though, is take out from one of my notebooks and a and a like a piece of charcoal, mm -hmm. and just do like a rubbing of the marks on the gold to okay. keep in my notebook. Yeah. So, th so these don't. Does look it look at least similar to the ones that we saw in the cup? And the similar, very similar, yes. Okay. Yeah, so maybe there's a there is some sort of language there or or sim symbolic you know some symbolism. I d I don't know, but it's nothing you recognize. And I mean there there's no better person to be look examining this than you. So what do you suppose? Seems to me if this was some sort of robber that they probably would have taken the most valuable thing about. This gold seems seem relatively straight. untouched apart from the uh, little scraps of charred flesh that our, our Bosch companion here was so keen to look at. What, um, what, what about the, the, the codex of this Gaspar Figueroa character? Could it be that this, uh, whoever this was, was after the same thing that we were? It's, I we should probably, let's read that thing. Yeah. Um, all right, uh, who would like to give it a, give it a read here? Oh the oh this room. The final confessions of Gaspar Figaro. Kate, do you want to want to read it? Sure, I'm not going to read it in a German accent. I know you, everyone <laughs> what wants the that. Hell? Um, <laughs> it. It'll take forever. Um, so Spanish. It's written by Gaspar Figueroa in 1543 on vellum, um, and he's a Spaniard who traveled to Peru with Francisco Pizarro. Maybe you've and heard it, of him. <laughs> Not I. But um, so the text is, according to the text, Figueroa set out to seek his own fortune following Pizarro's assassination in 1541. He was accompanied by Hernando Ruiz, Diego, Diego Garrido, Luis de Mendoza, hmm? and Pedro de Velasco, feather, fellow conquistadors who had served with Pizarro. They traveled to the southern highlands of the Andes looking for treasure, hoping to make their fortunes before heading back to Spain and retiring in luxury. Hearing rumors of an ancient temple filled with gold, the men set off into the mountains southwest of Lake Titicaca. No giggles? Okay. Uh, well, they this, were... this, is all, this is in a meta world. Uh... <laughs> they, uh, there they found a pyramid surrounded by a maze-like structure of underground tunnels. The walls of the tunnels were inlaid with intricate gold carvings. The men pried out a large large section of gold, exhausting themselves in the attempt. That night, as they rested, an evil sickness befell Figueroa's companions. In the morning light, they looked gaunt and death-like. Complaining of agonizing hunger, ooh, they pursued Figueroa. De Mendoza caught up with him and started to devour him like a human leech. Figueroa shot his friend in the head and fled, pausing only to snatch up as much of the gold as he could carry. Figueroa eventually arrived back in Lima, hoping to get passage home, but he was too weakened by his ordeal. Figueroa describes himself as wasted, little more than a walking corpse. I read final confessions as Figueroa's attempt to lift the guilt that his avarice, avarice. avarice had Screed. placed upon him. He believed that his fate and that of his companions was brought about by the desecration of a holy place and his most fervent wish was that he could undo the damage he had inflicted. He describes how he can still hear his friends' voices crying out with inhumane hunger Ugh. and how in the dark of night he can hear another voice, ancient and seductive, promising him eternal life if he returns to the temple. The voice told Figueroa how to contact it, but it seems Figueroa was too afraid to ever attempt this. A postscript written by the priest who performed the last rites states that Figueroa died a day after completing his final confessions. His last words were an entreaty to whatever gods were listening to forgive him his blasphemies. Wow. Pretty standard a lot, stuff. A lot really. to unpack there. That's a lot of information. <laughs> So, A, 
De Mendoza, people were worried that that guy was some kind of a creature, some sort of a bloodsucker. I mean, I mean, this was leech. 1543. Dude looks and pretty it's good. 1921 years old. Yeah. I mean, it sounds like a common name. Um, it perhaps, perhaps it's another Louis De Mendoza. Could be, it could be like Smith, but in Spain. <laughs> oh, no, no. <laughs> Oh, jeez. I would this say, I would up. say, uh, that it sounded, uh, frightfully common, Mr. Tillinghast, if not for the detail of the leech yeah. when we, when we clearly see this wound, but there, there must be another explanation. But do you suppose that the gold that was mentioned in this letter is the same gold slab that we just see right here? It does seem to have the effect of this sort of asymmetrical inlay. Could this be a- Are we going to turn into what cheese- ooh. Are we going to turn into what she's turned into? Well, not if How this has you... anything to say about it. And you see, and you see uh, him pat his, pat his belt. Um, but is this a piece of the very inlay from these labyrinthine corridors? Certainly seems like it. Well, if it was, what else was taken out of this box then? Because if I'm the guy breaking open this box, I'm taking that golden pickle. Well, don't forget too, there is burnt skin all over the golden pickle. Mm -hmm. That's gross. Do we all, we gross. can all tell that that's what that is? Mm -hmm. is it smells there, like burnt skin. Mm. Is there anything else more to tell or learn from the burnt skin? I do have a little bit of first aid, um, but other than that, also the blood on the floor, uh, I'd like to look at that too before we leave. Okay. Um, do you have anybody of the track skill? Uh, oh, good question. Nope. I, I have, have ten. Ten. Yeah, give it, give it a whirl. You never know. You might get lucky, or you might fail miserably. Let's see. Track. Nope. What is that under? Oh, there it is. No, I only have. I'll try, but. Margo nope. is overwhelmed and failed pretty epically at track. I got real close. I didn't make it. Uh, close enough to spend luck. Or uh, I mean, I'm only luck? four over. Oh. Oh. So yeah. Oh, yeah. Do it. Do it. Okay. Do it. Um, well, I'll answer the question about the uh, the gold band. I mean, it it looks like uh, someone put their hand around it, and there's like flesh from the hand on it. So like it burned their hand. Is someone hold, wait. Is someone holding it right now? Someone. Did one you? of you already picked it up. I think it was uh, Feyruz, and and you yeah. didn't have that. You didn't have that reaction. Um, but it looks like someone gripped it and it seared the skin off their hand. So if that's what you say, then uh, Vaughn um, reaches for it to just give it give it a gentle like tap, tap, tap. Is there any, feel any ambient heat coming off of it? No, uh, ice cold. I was going to suggest that I hold on to that just in case we needed a big gold bar for our future <laughs> endeavors, but I, I don't really want to do that uh, anymore. It's probably <laughs> cursed. <laughs> Definitely cursed. Yeah, I would put, maybe put it, maybe just put it down. Maybe put it, stop uh, yeah. touching it with your skin. That's why I did the the rubbing of the thing instead of actually taking the thing. I don't want to hold on to that. Okay, great. What a bummer. It's, a, it's just a waste to see good gold go to waste you know, uh, through a curse. So many good pieces of gold ruined that way. Uh, now listen, guys, I can, I feel like I can track this. By track, I mean, I guess I'm looking at the footprints in the blood? Yeah, you do start looking down at the blood, and you see there's footprints uh, going every which way, but you do see them exiting out uh, a side door in the storeroom. Okay. So in order to pass this check here, I just subtract the luck points I need to get yep. under? Yeah, so subtract four. You've spent four luck. Um, okay, great. But uh, you'll you'll get it back next time. No, oh, I mean, I'm playing with house money. I got seven right. to start the session. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, I mean, it's, I don't know why anyone wouldn't use the optional luck rule. It's so fun. Because um, sometimes you're just like, ah, I'm so close. Um, okay. So, yeah, you know, the, the, you do you do see in the note that that's, these guys did take some chunk of gold out, and that's what led to all their troubles, it appears. Uh, is that this chunk of gold? You don't know. It seems pretty important. Mm -hmm. I'd love to, uh, I tell you, I'd, I'd love to ask um, 
Professor Sanchez about it post haste. Oh, would you, would you have to tell him about the girl though? Yeah, uh, we should probably. I'll break it to him. You guys want me to do it? I think I can do it with it. I got a kid touch, gentle, gentle hands, so to speak. That didn't sound right. You know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> kid, kid oh, gloves. Yeah, hands going to be yeah, 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 that's the ticket. Yeah, kid I touch gloves. kids. What? <laughs> I'm great with touching kids. Let's go. Uh, let's go talk Whoa. to them. But, but, but no. do, are we going to? Are we going to? Can we still follow the the blood trail tracking? If we, that's another. Yeah, let's let's do that first. Dealer's yeah, yeah. choice: blood trail or Professor Sanchez. I mean, I, he I might think... be wondering what's going on. Blood trail. Blood, blood trail. trail. Blood trail. I don't know why you guys are chanting. <laughs> <laughs> blood trail, trail. Blood when you get trail. Chant that. Our eyes roll back and begin to cry tears of blood. <laughs> get away from the gold! Show me blood trail! Uh, Alright, so you guys are going to follow the trail of blood. It leads out a side door. Um, what could go wrong? Oh, well, if that's the case, before he left, Margot takes a picture of the girl in the circle chest. She's got a camera, and she Ooh, would that's like to use a picture of that. Oh, oh nice. really? Mm-hmm. Future I'm sitting here with a sketchbook. Art project. Future just art like, inspiration. Just also, just like, what the hell? I'm never going to, I'm not going to believe that I remembered this. If you come all the way to Peru and you don't see a dead body, have you really seen Peru? Yep. It's in the brochures. Uh, that's true. They're on the cover of all brochures. Visit right. beautiful Peru. It was in the in flight magazine. <laughs> <laughs> Home of the, that's their uh, their local baseball mascot, oh, gaping God. torso wounds. <laughs> Give it up for the Lima torso wounds. They're an expansion. Uh, <laughs> so you guys, you guys follow the blood trail instead of going out the way you came, and it's still dark down there. It's very uh, circuitous, but you find yourself uh, eventually at another staircase leading back up to the floor where the professor's office uh, is. Do you continue in that direction? Yes, and I would like to say that Vaughn at this point will pull and ready the uh, 32 caliber pistol that he has in his belt. Oh. Oh, well, yes. la-di-da. Carter uh, sees that and then is just like, you. yeah, you go. You, I think you should go first. <laughs> the um, guy who just lost sanity. I will yeah. follow suit and <laughs> also draw my 22. Okay, so yeah, you should 30. then go, you go behind him. Wait, we got a marching order. Um, just walking around That's a school with guns. You think I, it was 2022? Hey! Not hey, that I believe this hey. leech man rubbish for a moment, but I mean, whatever made that wound, I'd rather be on the business end of this. But I just want to remind you not to knock the wind out of your sails here, Chief. But the uh, I think the the journal we read said that uh, De Mendoza was shot in the head by his buddy, and so, still alive apparently. Still alive, but but <laughs> go get him. Can you believe <laughs> go that? Get him, do right? you? Yeah. It at least disarms somebody. I'm just saying, don't be surprised. Don't get your hopes up. I guess is where I'm going. Yes. With it. I'm glad that you yeah. have a gun. I'm just saying I'd rather have this than what whatever you're currently armed with. Uh, Perfumes and colognes. Yes. <laughs> well, you just be sure to hit your eau de rose at him while I give him a taste of the old uh, what for. <laughs> oh, no, I, I trust him. So uh, Vaughn and Feyruz pull out their uh, guns while Margot and Carter, uh, yet again, pull up the rear as you go up the stairs. As you start getting up, Uh, to the landing leading to the first floor, you all smell uh, smoke. It's a very faint smell, that sulfur smell, but you smell, you definitely smell smoke. You continue going, and uh, there is a hallway that just goes, you can tell that it's going away from the direction that you originally were, so away from the professor's office, Um, but it's the only way to go. So uh, following the blood trail, you continue going down that way, and it's just this circuitous route that eventually you feel like you're going back in the direction of the professor's office, and as you turn one of the corners, you then see smoke coming out of uh, a doorway about 20 feet ahead of you down this long hallway and you see someone like in the doorway just very you get like a sliver of their body and there's like this weird movement like a flapping what do you do is the Vaughn, hallway you, should, re- you should go check that out. Yeah. Is the hallway <laughs> we're looking down the one in which um, um, uh, uh, Sanchez's office is? 
you're all turned around. You feel like this is going to eventually lead you back in that direction, um, but the, you have not been down this hallway yet. Okay. Um, so there's this strange movement in the in the doorway of this room where the, where the smoke is coming from? Yeah, you just see a sliver into the doorway from the angle where you're standing, where it's just this like weird flapping movement from what looks like a, a person. Um. I just turn towards Vaughn mm -hmm. and I just do the signal and I would like to stealth forward. Okay. Pass give me a, give me the old stealth roll. Yeah. Feyruz, you ninja. <laughs> All right. Oh, did we ever do the, if that was something I'd succeeded on in the last game, isn't there a roll that we're supposed to, that it increases? Oh yeah, we're supposed that, to mark when we do no, that. Successful. So your skills go up. Uh, any successes, make sure you mark them if you had any yet tonight. Uh, but at the end of... Uh, like a, a long series of things, then you, there's an advancement phase. Gotcha, not, yeah, so not every, phase. not at the end of it. Okay, cool, cool, yeah. cool. Here we go. And I got a 35 under 40. Okay, nice. so Feyruz, you feel like you can be furtive enough to sneak up to that door jam and see, um, but you hope that they don't hear you. Those flapping could be just large ears. Yeah. So. Does, you walk does, up. I, I do. Yeah. Until I'm able to kind of see better what this thing is. You walk up slowly, alone, with your 22. And every step you get closer to this open doorway, you see more and more of this spastic movement and smoke billowing out of the room. That stench of uh, smoke in the air uh, filling, starting to fill your lungs um, and also making it a little hard to see into the room the closer that you get. Um, but you get up there and as you turn the corner, you see Jackson Elias and he's like, trying to fan out a fire in a waste paper basket. He's just like, he's shaking and, and, and like grabbing stuff to try and put on it, but it's just making it worse. Uh, and he doesn't see you. What? He's trying to put it out, I should say. It's Mr. Elias. Oh, uh, yes, uh, there's a, a, a fire was was started here. I, I, I ran down to, to see what was going on. We could smell smoke all the way coming from Professor Sanchez's office. I, I, I came out here and I saw this this waste paper bin was on fire. I'm trying to put it out, but I, I can't find any water and I'm, I feel like I'm just making it worse. So you didn't start this? No. Uh, could you could you help me? Do you have any, any water or anything we could use? I don't have any water on me, but looking around, is there something like I could use to smother yeah absolutely thing? you just you 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 were able to help him and within a, a minute or two subdue it um he was just more like fumbling around uh, like uh, and you're you were able to help him put it out uh but now the, the smoke everywhere and it stinks and you can barely see uh five feet in front of you and he's like thank you thank you i i i, I panicked I, I probably just made it worse uh thankfully you came i would have burned down the whole School, it was the strangest thing. We were just sitting there talking and then uh, we, we smelled something and I I came down here to, to check it out. Just um, just so I'm clear, was was um was Jackson Elias in the uh, in the professor's office when we left to go get uh, um Trinidad, 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 Trinidad <laughs> yeah. Rizzo? Uh, he was, yeah. He okay. said I'll 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 stay with the professor, you guys go down. Is the smell that we're smelling right now burning paper? It smells like burning paper, yeah. Okay. Um, just like the if there's not a window go? open, I might uh, open one to air it out. And um, yeah, uh, if the fire is out, like just take a look around this room. Like, what what is what what sort of room place is it? Is it another office? Is it a classroom? Is it a? Um, it's kind of like a supply closet um, where there shouldn't be a waste paper basket. So if you feel like someone pulled this in here, yeah. Uh, 
and started this fire. And I'd like to rifle through what's in it to see what was someone was attempting to destroy. You look, and uh, a lot of it is already burned away. Um, what's left is just nondescript papers. Okay. Not even a spot hidden could find a, a fun scrap. Yeah, no. Give me a give me a spot hidden. Let's try. Um, ooh, extreme success. I rolled a three Hi. on a 75. Hey. All right, with an, ex- with an extreme success, you can see that most of the remaining paper in there is completely blank. A distraction. Mm. Is ooh. there still blood on the, f- like we followed blood here. Is there any in the room? Did the blood trail go into this room? When Carter uh, is able to come up, rolling over your successful check from before, as you're still tracking it, you do see this. It's faint. It's something that Jackson uh, wouldn't have known was there, so wasn't looking for. But you see it, um, and you see that it continues on back in the direction of the professor's office. Ooh. Perhaps someone did this to get you out of his room, and I, I begin to run towards uh, um, Professor uh, Sanchez's office. Cameras now on Vaughn just running down the hall. And you burst into the office. And as you do, you're looking for Professor Sanchez and you see him. And he's on the floor, just like writhing in agony. And all around the circumference of his mouth is like like all up uh, under his nose, around his lips, all covering his chin is this like rancid, waxy, white secretion. And he just looks at you and with all of his strength, he's like, he kissed me. Uh-huh. And he's just like convulsing. Ew. Um. I, I roll to clean up the goo. Um, <laughs> um, get over here, you. Get over. Uh, so messy. Oh, dear God. A little um, schmutz. Yeah. Um, I tear my... I, 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 I want to get this goop off of him. Okay, it seems to be... A piece of your clothing or grab something to kind of just wipe this off of his mouth? Uh, yeah, I think Vaughn, Vaughn is... Uh, it's uh, got to be like uh, a school flag. In the office, <laughs> I, gotta, I mean, all gentlemen have a, a, a handkerchief. <laughs> yeah, yeah out comes, out comes a little, uh, little uh, cravat. Um, yeah, I, I very disrespectfully rip a piece off the flag. <laughs> you're not American. You're fine. Yeah. You stomp um, on it a couple times. And then you 1776, <laughs> asshole. Mm-hmm. Yeah, out the comes, flag out comes a on handkerchief, fire. and I'm and I'm and I'm tempting to get it off. All right, so you 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 reach down to start to take it off, and like as you're wiping and pulling the handkerchief chief up uh this secretion just like elongates up into the air all the way as you lift the handkerchief up uh-huh. so you're trying to wipe and you just feel like you're making it worse it's like smearing it uh all over him uh-huh. and he's just like uh, uh, what's wrong with me what what did he do oh no i feel like by this point margo runs in behind you and what? What's happened? Who? Who? I don't know. I blue eyes. He had blue eyes. And his mouth. His mouth wasn't wasn't right. Oh, and he's like grabbing his stomach. He's like. Oh. I'll, I'll, oh. Let me do a first aid roll like the way you're supposed to. Let me see if I can help him. Uh, uh, help administer some some aid. Okay. Oh, uh oh. <laughs> I'll try also since I'm there. Yeah. It's yeah, it's all hands on deck, and now it's like frantic. You don't know what's wrong with them. Yep, not not it. No dice. I guess oh. we. I'll I'll come running up, not to do the first aid, obviously. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but the, <laughs> just comes running in because of the commotion. Like, oh, oh my yeah. god. Falling <laughs> as well. Give me, give me some water or something. Uh, oh. I'm very seriously going to up Chuck. <laughs> yeah, he's just like in pain. He's twisting on the floor and you can tell he's in so much pain and this, this white secretion is just like dripping off of his face onto his chest. Uh, everybody give me a spot hidden. Oh, okay. 
I have a bad feeling about this. I need to spot my stomach Ooh. not turning over. Ooh. I rolled a one. Whoa. <gasps> Roll a 30 under Hell 75. Yeah. That ain't a one. <laughs> I rolled a 52 under 70. I rolled shit. Yes. Marco's right. got super sight. Yeah, you all succeed, but Marco, <laughs> with, the, with a critical success. Uh, all right, so you all see he like he's like clutching at his, at his chest clutching at his stomach and he starts like ripping his his shirt yeah. open a little bit and as his uh skin is bared you see something crawling under his the skin of his abdomen God. Mm. just like blah, blah, blah. and margo with your critical su- su- success all you think is we got to get that out we got to get that out of him because mm-hmm. Kate is like, we got to get out of this room. <laughs> we got to get out of this adventure. <laughs> um, so yeah, Margo, she's like looking at him, failing the first aid check, being like, hey, there must be a way I could help him. I just don't know. And she's watching him and she sees the crawling and she goes, look, look, there's movement under the skin. Maybe we can oh. cut it out. Oh, I don't a, know. Oh, you I got a, a like knife. A knife or something? From I, the... I do have a knife. Oh. I do have a knife in my possession. All right, get in there. Uh, uh, give it here, give it here. Push me. <laughs> do, do, you have, do you have a better, like, I have like zero, I have like a one in medicine. Oh, I can do it first. <laughs> I, I have a one in medicine also, but I, I, I at least have the first aid. Cool, I do, I do hand you the knife because I think that's a very low stat for me. <laughs> and no one else has medicine or first, or first aid. I also have 30 in first aid. Okay, yeah, one in medicine, only cake can hit. Um, I don't know. I don't know if it's too meta. Do you feel? Do you feel more confident? Doing oh, this I have first a thirty day? in first aid. How much? So do I. So what? Oh, why, why, yeah. why? Why would I do the honors? Go for it. All right. <laughs> All right I'm gonna. I'll, I'll hesitantly step forward, and then as soon as I see that thing wiggling, I'm just like, ha! <laughs> get it! Get it! It's right there. You got it. You got this. I, I have total faith. Well, let, what me did you roll? Make sure, let me make sure. Let me make sure. Let me make sure. Let me make sure. Okay. Yes, I rolled a twenty-eight. Just Ooh. under 30. Just Whoa. under 30. Yay. All right, so you <laughs> you start trying to slice where this thing is crawling, and you slice into his skin, and you see the thing sort of, it almost is like it's running away from your knife as you're doing it. And so you cut a little bit more and you succeed in making a small incision. Um, as you do so, he starts like dry heaving. Oh, and I'm just like, oh, sorry, 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 sorry. <laughs> and then he just like, <laughs> and this like, Size oh, of a fist, like white larva, <laughs> just comes out of his mouth, like, oh, and it flaps onto his chest. And oh. it's just this, like, shapeless mass of white protoplasm. It kind of looks like congealed fat, about yeah. the size of a fist, and it's just flipping around, and it rushes to you. Oh, it's jabbing at it. And we'll see you right after this word from our sponsor. Oh, right. oh, God. <laughs> oh, baby, first combat of the adventure. This is going to be wild. But you know what? Let's start with a sanity check because that was gross. <laughs> It's kind of funny that we're gonna fight a slug as our first combat, like a little Just, larva. That's a, you know, it's it's kind of poetic when you think where this is going to go. When you imagine where this is going to go, what you'll be fighting at the end. It just starts now with a simple slug. Um, so sanity check. Let me know if you f- actually let me know if you pass or fail. Pass, baby. Pass, baby. Actually, I think that was a, that's at the half. Yeah, that's a, that is a extreme. Success. Mm-hmm. Oh, did I pass? Yes. Oh, all right. Two passes. Any fails? Nope. Carter. All right, I great. Got, I got a twenty-eight under fifty. All right, you don't take anything uh, on a pass here because some of sometimes it's like pass. Oh, good. You only take ten sanity. Uh, in this case, you don't take any. Uh, however, listen, throat slug. Who cares? Been there, done that. <laughs> Conk shoe. We just saw a dead woman with a hole in her chest. Yeah. Uh, all right, now. 
we are getting into combat. This is where things get a little a little crunchy. Obviously, this is the system's a little new for people, uh, new for me too. I've only uh, logged a, a handful of hours at this point, twenty hours maybe running these. Um, who had a drawn gun? Both of you. Okay, so you get a plus fifty to you know your initiative because basically the way initiative works in this game, it's all based on your dex score. So your typical dex order: Margo has a dex of eighty, Feruz has a dex of fifty-five. Carter has a 40 and Vaughn has a 40. But Vaughn, you'll be bumped up to a 90 for this. And Feyruz, you'll be bumped up to a 105. Um, because if you have a drawn gun, uh, you get to uh, act quicker. Um, so because of that, Feyruz, you can act first. And just because you drew the gun doesn't mean you have to use it. Okay. Your options are, you know, you could shoot the gun, uh, but this thing is crawling on this guy's chest. You could try and stab it because you you have a, established that you have a knife. Uh, you can try to do other things or you can just flee. Uh, you tell me what you want to do and then we'll work out how it works. I think what I want to do, because I have both weapons drawn, I don't have the stat for the dagger on hand but i would because i don't want to shoot the guy by accident right i want to try to stab at this thing okay and uh you know another thing is where this thing is so small uh it has a build of uh, i can tell you right now of negative two whereas you have a build of one i think kate is the only one that has a build of zero where it has a build of negative two if you were to shoot you actually take a penalty die uh because oh. it's so small uh so with the penalty die you roll two tens and take the worst uh number uh on a okay. d100 roll uh so yeah maybe uh, a stab yeah, is better Definitely want to stab. I'm trying to see if I could find the stats for the knife. I don't have that on hand, but should I just roll for it uh, first? Yeah, you, are you just looking for what the damage of the knife yeah. would be? Yeah. It's probably 1d3, um, but we'll, okay. uh, we'll we'll figure it out uh, in the event that you hit. Now, I got to decide what I want to do. So the way combat works is like if someone's attacking you uh, in melee, so not with a firearm, you can either uh, dodge or fight back, uh, or do nothing. Uh, and if you dodge, uh, tie goes, and, and you tie, basically, you don't take damage. So dodge is kind of the safe way to go. Uh, if you try to fight back and you tie, the aggressor scores. Um, otherwise, you have to have a higher success than the person that attacked. Um, I could have explained that better, but now I'm the defender, so I have to decide what I want to do. Normally, monsters fight back. In this case, this wiggly little thing is going to try and dodge out of the way. So I'll be rolling a dodge against okay. your fighting uh, melee uh, or fighting brawl? knife, whatever you have. Uh, would I use brawl for that? Uh, you would. Okay. Cool. Uh, let me get my dodge John up. All right, and whoever has the higher success wins. On a tie, I actually avoid... Uh, if we both roll the same success, I avoid your dagger. Ooh, hmm. I rolled a 12 under 25. A 12 Ooh. under 25. So you rolled a hard success, and I rolled a hard success as well. Uh, I was trying to see if I rolled an extreme, but I rolled a... Let me just make sure. Yeah, a hard um, so it phew, moves out of the way of your knife and you stab right on the ground next to the professor. Um, if you had fumbled, I would have had you stab right through him. Uh, right <laughs> where he's, he's already gone. He's gone through a lot already. I don't know if he'd really... He's had right a ton of Why are you stabbing me? <laughs> First you cut me, then you... Uh, all right, so now it moves to Vaughn because Vaughn, you have a, a, a gun drawn, so you are able to act quickly. Okay, so, um... It's dodge took it off of the body of our of our uh, poor unfortunate friend um, Sanchez. It's more of like a Bugs Bunny cartoon, like it just like reshaped around the blade. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. So it's still in the same spot, but it just like whoop, moved uh -oh. out of the way. It, it's just this gross little thing that's moving very very quickly, uh, and so it gets out of the way as this is all happening in real time. Uh, Feyruz goes to stab down and it wriggles out of the way, and it's making its way towards Feyruz. I just want to confirm that it's off of the body and on the floor now. Uh, no, it's like down now near his leg. Okay. Okay. So yeah. I will not shoot it. <laughs> <laughs> it's only his leg. Take it. It's true. Take off his leg. Um, 
And so instead, I think I'll try to uh, just like whip the pistol around and whack it off of him. Okay. Pistol whip it away. All right. Um, great. So this, what your what your goal here? This sounds to me like a maneuver. Yeah. Um, and because you have a specific goal in mind, your goal is to use your pistol to try and knock this thing off of the guy. Right. Um, so you're gonna roll uh, your brawl, and okay. then I let me just see here. If I try to dodge, you are going to get a bonus die because I've already dodged this round and I only have one attack. Uh, so I'm going to try and dodge. So you get a bonus die, which means you get to roll two tens and take the better result. And, and just so I'm um, just so uh, that's the just the lower the second digit. So it would still be 30, but it might be a 35, not a 30. No, the other way around. It oh, might great. be if you roll a five and a, a, a 40 and a 60, then you great. take the 45 instead of the 65. Understood. OK, here we go. All right. We're going to go with the 37, which is under my brawl skill of 45. Okay. Um, just checking my situation here. And I rolled. What did you roll? Sorry? Uh, I rolled a, a regular success. Regular success. And uh, I rolled a, a hard success. So this mm. thing is just really, wow. really tricky the way it's wriggling around. And now it's its turn. And so oh, on no. its turn, it spends its whole round. I mean, this is so gross. I'm sorry to do this to you, Nora. It like in an instant leaps off of this guy's body and starts crawling its way up towards Feyruz's mouth. And so no! it's sitting like right on your neck, trying to make its way in to your yeah, mouth. No, I don't like it. I don't and like it, stop it. It's so like acidic, it actually is starting to burn your skin and Whoa. you take one hit point of damage from it just sitting on your skin. And you can tell that it's trying to crawl inside of you. I am not, ha can I just try to take that knife and pry it away from my mouth? Just in three shish, short uh, shish turns, kebab you can. It off of me. <laughs> Just one of these. Boop. Uh, I think we have some artwork from the book of uh, what uh, it looks like when this thing crawls onto your face, and it's uh, pretty, pretty gross. Uh, oh. I'll see if I can throw it up on roll twenty, but I know the people at home can see it. Um, <sighs> oh, my hit point thing. Oh, here it is. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you guys are gonna. Sorry, that's what it looks like. No. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely oh not! Oh god! Just put, <laughs> Get off me! Bruce's face, face there. Just All right, so this this is bad. Um, and spear now, that thing off of my face and into the trash fire, where <laughs> I will roast it for a living. It is now uh, Margot's turn. Um. Okay. I don't have any weapons, and no. I don't want to take. Uh, her knife and try to stab the thing. I don't have confidence in doing that. Is there anything in the room, like some sort of long stick-like thing where I can just like grab it and try to like flick it off of her? Totally, Pry it yeah. off me, pry it off me! Yeah, the I beauty of this that. game is like, you can just use anything as an improvised weapon. If you look down at the, at the professor's desk, maybe he has a lamp that you can grab and just like swing. And really like, you're trying to hit the thing. I'm not gonna say if you miss, you hit Feyruz. However, if you fumble, well then I might do that. Uh, or I might do something much worse. Uh, but you're just trying to hit this thing and it's trying to get out of the way. But you will get a, uh, a bonus die because it's already dodged this round. Um, I will gladly take this. a lamp to the face rather than have this thing crawl oh, in my mouth. Break my face. <laughs> I've seen the light. So Margot grabs the most ornate la lamp on the desk, and so what am I? I'm, Ooh, a I'm it's a brawl. Lamp. Yeah, brawl. And you said a bonus dice. Yeah, so you roll the tens dice twice and take the better roll, if which I is hit. the lower. Okay. No, you just you you roll and you take the better. So if you roll a forty-five and a seventy-five, you take the forty-five. Oh 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 yeah. oh. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Sometimes if you <gasps> crit, I might just give you a bonus die. If you fumble, I, mean, I might give you a penalty die. I rolled a two. Yeah. <laughs> Holy yes. moly! I can't believe it. Beat like, that, double zero you little slug. and a two. All right, so that's an extreme success, right? Yeah, yeah. I have a thirty in brawl, and that's definitely less than a fifth. Okay, so where that is an extreme success, 
that is maximum damage uh, if I don't roll an extreme success on a dodge. I swear to God, if you roll a extreme success, and I rolled a regular success on a dodge. Yeah. Nice. So you get max damage from that lamp, which I'm going to say uh, <laughs> is uh, is a uh, four hit points. Uh, so you do four max damage. Actually, but you have a damage bonus. Do you said I had an extra die because he dodged? In regard, oh no, that no, was on the that right. was on the attack roll. But do you have a damage bonus because this would. Uh, I don't think you do with your strength. But does your character sheet have a da- damage bonus? Damage bonus? No, I have a zero. You have a zero. Okay. Had you had a damage bonus, that might have been enough. Uh, because when you roll uh, an extreme success on an attack like that, you do max damage with a blunt weapon like that. And you would also get max bonus damage, but you don't have any. However, you do do four points of damage. So this thing looks like there's just like blood squirting out of it. It's getting into Feroz's mouth. And th- uh, this black bile is re- leaking down her shirt. And now it's Carter's turn. Carter, you see this thing's on the ropes. What do you do? All right, so so she hit she hit it with a lamp, but it's still on the face. Uh huh. Um, I love to grab it and throw it into the wall. <laughs> grab it and just <laughs> huck it into yeah, the wall. Just Great. huck the shit out of it. Yeah. All right, so that is going to be a fighting maneuver. So you'll use your brawl. Uh, we know what your goal is when you're doing a maneuver. It's all about the goal. Um, but where this thing is so small, you'll take a penalty die. Okay. Um, because your build is one and it's is negative two. Uh, so you'll take a, a penalty dra- die to try to pull this off because it's wriggling around and you're trying to grab it and toss it. Uh, and then it will try and dodge. So go ahead and give me that roll. Okay, so the penalty die is what, it, like I'm adding another. Roll, t- roll twice and take the, oh, okay. the lower so result. So roll with disadvantage essentially. Right, but you don't okay. roll the... Uh, the, the lower tense. number. Like or the single yeah. You know what I mean. I'm not saying it right, but yeah. 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 Uh oh. <laughs> I mean I don't even know why I'm bothering to roll the other one. Yeah. That was a ninety-six. Whoa. Okay. Oh uh, no. What is your fighting skill? Uh seventy. Okay, so that's not a fumble. If that was under a 50, a 96 to 100 is actually a fumble, in which case I would have had you just sock Feyrus. Just grab uh, Feyrus, just tear her nose off. Mm-hmm. You know, the bad news is I failed the dodge roll, so all you had to do was succeed, and that would have been enough to get it off of her. We now move to the second round here. I can tell you it's going to be Feyrus, then Vaughn, and then this thing is going to try and enter. Feyrus's mouth Ooh, and do no, the same no. thing that it was doing to the professor. Uh, Feyrus, what do you do? This I'm trying just... to skewer this thing and pry it off my face. Whoa. Yeah, you want to use your knife? Do you want to like puncture it? Like you want to stab at it? Or do you want to try and do the flank? I it's, want to try. I'm don't not wanna, being like, overly pedantic because those two different actions here, the stab and the maneuver. It's more like I'm trying to, because I don't want to stab myself. I want to try to flick this thing off of me. Okay, well, you know what? Give me the brawl, uh, but it's going to be at a penalty die because this thing is on your face and you're trying to, like, it's wriggling and it's moving. It's going to be hard to get off. Okay, so this is uh, my fight, my brawl. Uh-huh. Okay. And then what, how, explain to me the penalty die. Penalty die is you roll the uh, the tens twice and take the worst result. Gotcha, gotcha. So like, yeah, okay. So there's that. All right, so my worst was still, I still succeeded. It was a 21 under 25. And I failed my dodge. Nice. Here we go. So you take this thing, you stab it, and you flick it off of you, and it just, you you impale it, it takes a little bit of damage, uh, and it falls to the ground, and it just like, and it stops moving when it hits the floor. I immediately vomit. Immediately vomit. Right onto the professor's open wounds. Right onto him. (laughs) Why? Why? <laughs> hey, it keeps getting water to oh. your head. If, if there's a coffee cup or anything nearby, I immediately crunk, put it over the top of that thing on the on the ground. And you see that the carpet underneath the coffee mug is starting to burn away 
from its uh, acidic uh, skin and oh. bile. Oh. It's like a trash can, something we could, uh, like something metal or. You just keep stacking things on top. <laughs> you feel like you have like it under a nesting control. doll of like uh-huh. shit that it's going to burn through. There was definitely that like last twitch as it hit the floor after you pried it off, and then you cover it up, and just the ground is sizzling. Jackson is like, "What was that?" It was a, it almost almost went in my mouth. <laughs> Almost went in my mouth. Yeah, Carter's like, here, here t- take this. Uh, you can keep this. And he like gives her his handkerchief <laughs> to wipe her, wipe the gross. Yeah, so, so that, like, that's yours. Wait to be a gentleman, Tillinghast. I'd offer you my own, but it's currently covered in whatever opalescent ooze was on this creature. Uh, <laughs> uh, not to add insult to injury, of course, as I'm trying to like gingerly put the <laughs> handkerchief into the waste paper basket. Like, oh, well. <laughs> Won't be taking that back to Herod's. Ugh. I got 12 more in my luggage. It's cool. <laughs> um, yeah. where, oh, did that, uh, where did that come from? Yeah. An excellent question, Miss Elias. I was, I was wondering you might enlighten us, or perhaps you, Professor, as I may be slapping, like gently slapping him in the face, like, Professor? <laughs> like, yeah, Jackson kneels down with you and he, he kind of shakes out of it as well and he's trying to help his friend, uh, the professor. Uh, and and he's he's no longer writhing in pain, but he's all fucked up. He's got uh, incision on his uh, chest and, and the secretions and he's, he's taken some burn damage uh, from this thing that also crawled up on his face, just like you took one hit point of damage. He took at least one and then he's taken some other damage. So he's very like dizzy and he's lightheaded and he's just like, hey, when you, when you ran out to investigate the, the the smoke that we smelled, it wasn't but a moment when this 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 man. I thought it was a man. I th- actually I thought it was one of you. Came in. Uh, I thought maybe he had a, a mustache, piercing blue eyes, uh, just dressed rather shabbily. But he came in, and and, and I, I turned as if to say, Oh, okay, can I help you? And his. His mouth was unlike anything I'd ever seen. It was, it was extended out beyond any normal, almost like some side of some kind of a fish or something. And he just, he 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 lurched at me and he, he put his mouth directly over my face and and just held me there. And I could feel teeth all around just sticking their way in, just holding me in place, and then he he must have regurgitated that thing into me. And then he, 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 when he left, and I think he went out the window, I don't know. I hit the ground, and immediately I felt this, this thing inside of me. And you can tell he's like, he's, he's on the brink of, of losing sanity as well. And Jackson is, is, is just white as a sheet, he's, he's just, in shock of this. This is a man, he's not a man of science, but like he doesn't believe in any of this. Hokum. Carter uh, looks back to the group and kind of gives them like a little wink. He's like, well, Professor, we got good news and bad news. Uh, the good news is you're alive. Uh, yes, the bad news yes, is, and I have you to thank for that. Yeah. Thank you. The bad news is we found Trinidad downstairs with a gaping wound in her chest, and I think she's dead. Uh, very dead. No. No, not Miss Riso. It can't be so. Are you sure? Are you are you certain it's her? Are you certain she's dead? She was uh, pickled. I think is the best word for it. Or uh, just yeah, it was it was her. But bright side, she probably died doing what she loves. You know, she was in the archives studying, part of the school, the university. And he uh, just he just starts weeping. <laughs> Carter turns to them. He's like, "See, I nailed it. I don't know what." <laughs> what is mm. happening? What is happening? Is the tales of the Kalasiri true? <laughs> and Jackson just like holds him to try and, and calm him down. And, and he's, this guy's had a, a hell of a last hour and he's, he's inconsolable. Yeah. While you guys were talking, Margo runs over to the window that he said he thought the thing jumped out of and just like, <gasps> looks out or looks at the window, looks out it. Yeah, you look, it's one of those like double windows that latches from the inside and opens uh, in towards the room and you look out um, and you just see trees 
and the quad, um, the area that, with which you walked in, and it's eerily silent. You don't even see other students running around. Whatever that thing was, it's gone. I'm not going to lie, guys. This day is not going the way I thought it was going to go when I woke up late in the hotel. Worst day ever I've ever had. It makes me almost wonder if I should just give up on this entire adventure. That's, <laughs> it's pretty intense. But then I think about my home life, and I'm still on board. Oh, where where do we where do we start? Well, we have how long until we have to meet the next morning? Tomorrow morning we have to meet at the. <laughs> so hotel it's Saturday. The you have huh? Monday to meet Larkin. Okay. Uh, I've seen this. I'm tell wondering if there's going to be any of Larkin left. Well, Mendo- De Mendoza is the one I feel like we should do our best to either avoid or track or find out what he's up to. Though, avoid I'm, and track is two different things. Which one do we do? I'm abjectly <laughs> terrified of the man at this point. So, uh, um, Jackson is like we 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 have to we have to call someone to to take him take him to a hospital and you can see Jackson is like completely out of sorts uh, he's, he, he can't quite piece it together um, he's we, we need to call a, a, an ambulance or some or or he needs to, he needs to see a doctor um, yes I suppose the authorities will have to be called considering there's a corpse in your archive and, a, and, the, and this gentleman is bleeding on your in his office yes uh, let's try to keep our names out of it w- w- won't you Yes, no, I, I, um, and he, he pulls you aside. Um, can, can one of you stay with, um, the professor for a moment? I, I want to find out more about what happened downstairs. I'll, I'll chill with him. I'm, I'm pretty good. Kid gloves and all that. I think I can pretty much walk him through. Uh, actually, you know what, Troy? I kind of, like, can I try, a uh, where is it? <laughs> Fast talk? Charm? Well, I was going to charm him, yeah. <laughs> yeah, try and charm him. Charm the professor just to chill Because he was out. about to look at Margo and be like, would you go instead? Yeah, you can't. <laughs> so, see if you can charm him, then I won't do that. Uh, okay, so I'm char- I'm trying to charm... Um, Jackson. Uh, a lot, okay. Uh, Forty-three under seventy-five. Uh, so at first he's like... Uh, and then he's like, oh, yes, uh, yes, just keep... Keep him, keep him safe for a moment. I just want to know what's, uh, what, what happened down there. He's looking at the other three of you. What you, you found the Miss Rizzo dead? Says, was she attacked in the same way? Uh, it's, pr- it's possible that that's what happened because there was the gaping hole in her chest. I didn't see any of the slime that you have. It's much there, like but... lunacy as it sounds. The wound on Miss Riso seems to be uh, at least reminiscent of what uh, the professor here describes. Right. Mr. Mr. P- professor Sanchez and I have talked at length about Karasiri and this folklore. We are, we are rational men. We never believed in any of this. There's, there's got to be a, a, a logical explanation as to, as to, as to what happened here. Um, well, so well have you read this? I know. I was going to say, I know we all want a logical explanation, but I found a, a notebook and she hands it to him. The con- Yeah, so we can read it. He reads it and he. Particularly, Check she points at right here. It says Louis de Mendoza. Oh, yes, I suppose de Mendoza is a common name. I- and it says here that he was killed by uh, Figueroa. How oh, something's not right? Maybe, maybe it's an, an ancestor of his, and and that's somehow involved in the cult. There's no way that the de Mendoza from the 300, 400 years ago is the same uh, de Mendoza this with Locke, and uh, none, none of this adds up. I understand uh, it's madness, but so, someone with um, knowledge of this sort of thing could could pay it particular homage. You know that. I don't believe in these fairy tales, but I believe that people believe in them and will act on them. And, and there's something about those blue eyes he keeps talking about. What do you think that means? 
Well, didn't Mendoza have piercing blue eyes? Yes, Mendoza did have blue eyes, and I only know that because he was staring at me with them the entire dinner. Uh, but, but what do we do? Do we, do we go to his hotel and, and barge in on his room and confront him? Do, do, do we go to Larkin? I, I, what, what, what? We have to get to that pyramid. Larkin has everything set up. I, I mean, I suppose I could make other arrangements, but then Larkin might get suspicious. He's going to, I, I, I'm sorry, I'm a little, I'm a little in over my head here. This is, this is not, I don't know what to do. What do you suggest? If this Mendoza is the same Mendoza that's in this letter, then we can't just barge in. It's far too dangerous. Yes. I agree. I mean, maybe the five of us could overwhelm them, but I don't... That's rubbish. That's, I'm not a fighter. I'm an author. Do you think Larkin knows? It was my suspicion that they were in cahoots somehow in this cult, but... Is Larkin a 400-year-old man as well? I, I, well? There was no mention of... He looks back at the dog. There's no mention of a, of a Larkin here. I, well, it I'm, does worry me more now that he was sick. Right. I so suppose sick he doesn't know everything, but he knows enough. Whatever yes, it is, he's in over he his head. Sick. He was sick, yes. Hmm. Sawa. So, uh, you said that there was a uh, burned flesh on that bit of gold, as though someone had grasped it and burnt their palm on it. And that's that's what that, that that's what it looked like. It looked like someone grabbed it and it it burned them. Now, I'm not but... saying I believe all this rot, but if this was a fairy tale we were walking into, it seems to me that uh, if Mendoza is one of these Karasiri, then whatever that is might burn him up as well. <laughs> but it's just not logical. No, none of this is. I mean, a neither liar. is that slug, but... I, as much as you don't want to confront him, I, sometimes the direct approach is the best approach. I'd rather have him at a... I'd rather have him at knife point than go skulking around where he can slip his mandibles over me and give me the little, uh, Remora eel kiss. You mean to confront de Mendoza or confront Larkin? Well, if this... I say go, go for what's most threatening. Whatever we do, we have to be careful with how we handle this. My suspicions of Mr. Larkin are just that. They're suspicions. And while I suspected Mr. de Mendoza was involved in this death, death cult, this new information is far more than I expected. Whatever we do, we have to proceed with caution. I think we should be very wary of how much we let on. Do we go to Larkin and tell him about de Mendoza? Put him on the spot. Do we... Do I don't... What if we... For the sake of self-preservation, mind you... If we act inconspicuous... And... For the sake of trying to gain more knowledge up leading up into... If we let on too early that we know any of this, it's our heads. But if we perhaps pretend like we don't know what's going on and try to get whatever information we can in the meantime until we can figure out what the bloody hell to do with this. Play dumb then. Guns the mouse. Right. Don't say a word. Yes. Be your cool. uncle. Indeed. As our Bosch friend right here say, we'll try to conduct ourselves with a modicum of sang Freud. Oh. Right. Well... We just bloody well better keep our eyes open. I don't want to. I don't want to wake up with one of those opalescent slugs clogging up my windpipe. You're quite burnt. 
Well, should we take you to the doctor as well? <sighs> no, 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 no. I would like to avoid that. I don't want to be on record having to do with any of this. Yes, we fine. should be careful what we what we do. Who knows who's in their pockets. Even reporting this, I should be very wary of who I talk to, but we do have a body downstairs and a man in need of medical attention. Uh, I've met some people I can trust. I'll call them and give them some money and that should be able to take care of this. Give him the attention he needs and give Miss Rizzo and her family some peace. Um, so is the plan to just meet Monday at 8 a.m. and pretend like nothing's happened? Um, it's not a bad plan. Part of me almost wants to like spy on them to see yeah, if we can, right. we can like follow, like tail yeah. them, see, try to try to um, observe them from a distance. Like see how they're preparing for tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, like go to the Hotel Espana and uh, yeah. that's where they're staying. You guys are staying at the Mori mm -hmm. and just kind of scope it out. Maybe mm -hmm. if if they see us, we can just say, oh, we wanted to try another hotel bar. Right. Mm. I suppose the best cover, cover stories have the, the ring of truth and I must admit, uh, I wouldn't mind sampling the wares. I could definitely use a drink right now, yes. Especially after today's <laughs> proceedings. Hmm. Wouldn't mind getting a bit tight. <laughs> you, guys are, you guys are separate of, of Carter and uh, the professor right now, right? You guys are kind yeah. of huddled up. Okay. Margot's just going to say she would love a, a... I would love a glass of gin. It was the bee's niece. <laughs> Anything over on any of this, I want... I. Oh my gosh. And she puts the lamp down. She's been holding it the whole time. She <laughs> says, so sorry, I whacked you with the lamp. Oh, no, no, no thank you. <laughs> thank you. Oh, yes. Quick thinking that and yeah. smart and dexterous fencing there with that knife of yours. Oh, I just, yeah, I think I, whew, just lucky I had it on hand. Well, All right. Know. Well, I think we should get going. Should is the plan then to start watching them tonight, and and how should we do that? If we all show up at the hotel. It's going to be more obvious. Hmm. What do you suggest? Should I go back to the Mori and take care of the situation here, and we'll reconvene? at the hotel bar there later tonight and some of you head to the Espana and see if you see anything? What if... What if we try to meet with... or we split up, part of us stays back to try to have a drink with them at the bar while the rest of us try to go snoop around in their rooms, perhaps? Ah, there we are. Bit of the old uh, distraction. Right. Um... Um... Who is there. the best chat? I, <laughs> you guys talking about uh, chatting over there? Ah, uh, yes. I think our friend Tillinghast has a, has a bit of the silver tongue and the gift of gab. <laughs> been, uh... Hold on one second. One, one second, guys. He turns back to the professor who he's he has his head in his lap. He's just been, like, caressing his hair. And he's like, <laughs> and that is how, in 1918, the Boston Red Sox won the World Series. <laughs> Yes. You guys talking about uh, charming? <laughs> that we are. Perhaps, um, perhaps if uh, Tillinghast and I waylay um, uh, Men Mendoza and Larkin at the bar, then maybe you two can go snooping around on the sly up in their rooms. I think that's a great idea because I'm looking at my stats right now and I'm incredibly not charming. <laughs> hey, don't uh. talk about my friend like that. All right. <laughs> So who's going to try and get upstairs to their rooms? That would be me. And me. All right. So boys at the bar, <laughs> ladies going up. All right. So you're all heading to the Hotel Espana. Uh, Jackson says, all right, I will, uh, I will check in with you later. I'm going to try and get this situation under control. Um, and uh, we've, already, we've already wasted too much time. And so he, uh, he goes off and he's, he's scrambling around. 
Mm-hmm. Meanwhile, you guys head back uh, in the direction of the hotels, and instead of going to the Mori, go to the Hotel Espana. Uh, we, I mean, we obviously freshen up a little bit, right? I mean, we don't have to role play the whole thing, but sure, yeah, a little definitely bit. Definitely don't yeah, want to have up. goop. Gussy Residual up. Yeah. goop. And maybe, on maybe we do a thing where, like, if y- if y'all are separate, maybe. Like once we get them talking, if I take off my tie or something, that's the signal that we've got them, uh, got them pinned at the bar, so you can take off. Up to <clears throat> I'll scream giggle juice. Yeah, yeah, that's, <laughs> yeah. that's better. That's better. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so uh, you make your way back uh, once you're all freshened up to the area where the Hotel Espana is. This is where you're supposed to meet Monday morning. Um, You see it's uh, maybe a slightly nicer hotel than the one you're staying in, but not like uh, significantly so. Uh, It's decorated rather eccentrically. The walls are all painted like bright primary colors and and the interior of the lobby is covered in paintings and photographs. Um, You can see the common areas, like the area where the bar is. There's uh, an eclectic selection of statues, plants, and artworks, and a nice uh, small but ornate uh, bar with a bartender serving Pisco Sours. Uh, There's a reception desk um, that just has one uh, small white-haired woman in a woolen shawl uh, sitting there behind the desk. Um, what do you guys do? I'll handle this. <laughs> just, <laughs> just in character is also already laughing to himself. Uh, <laughs> so she's sort of like she's clearly the employee behind the, the desk here, front mm-hmm. Uh Buenas noches, senorita. Uh, buenas noches. <laughs> um. Was wondering if it wouldn't uh, trouble you too greatly to um, ring oh, up. You must to... uh, speak uh, slow. I do not understand uh, too much English. My apologies. My brain cells operate at a speed faster than most. Uh, so, anyway, was wondering if you could call up to Senor. Larkin. De Mendoza's room <laughs> and let him know that Senors Tillinghast and Villiers would love a cocktail in the fine bar down here. De Mendoza. Uh, see, si, see. Si. Um, I, I am uh, Petronil Cupitina. I am, I'm so uh, sorry. I hope that's not contagious. No, I, this is my nome. This is my hotel, uh, Hotel Espana. I, um, the, the Mendoza. Hold on. And she calls uh, up. And no one answers. Is no answer at uh, Mr. De Mendoza. Mm-hmm. And have you, have you seen him coming or going anytime uh, recently, my sweet pedal? Uh, see, si, see, si, he, he come uh, not too long ago. He go upstairs and then, uh, and then he leave again. So he's not here. Uh, see, si, see, si. are you his amigo? Oh, big time amigo. Uh, yeah, grande. Um, grande you, amigo. Grande, that's me. Everybody's oh. grande amigo. You own this hotel, by the way. See, si, see, si, oh, I am. So you the must owner. have quite a, quite a coin purse yourself, madam. Oh, no. business is slow. <laughs> he holds up his his wedding He's like, were this not on my finger, I would uh, sweep you off your feet. Oh, I, you're much too ugly. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, he's just like, oh, and you just see everything drop. Like, he just got completely just shut, just like, oh, yeah, that's, uh, <laughs> sometimes I forget that it's there, this gaping hole in my face. <laughs> okay, well, thanks a lot. And he just kind of like, <laughs> what a charmer. <laughs> I just had a question real quick. Is this the same? Is Larkin also staying in this hotel or just Mendoza? He is, yeah. Okay. That, that's what he they said. Is like there were no rooms left. Um, otherwise, they would have put you all up here. Um, so if, um, if Villiers is kind of like just like 
just imagine him on the side of that conversation, just like <laughs> going back and forth as this little <laughs> little uh, uh, repast goes goes through. Like as a uh, Tillinghast walks away, it's like, what about um, M- uh, Senor Mendoza's uh, amigo, uh, uh, Senor Larkin? Don't bother with her, Vaughn. She's a horrible person. <laughs> Larkin, is he? Is he? Mr. Larkin is here too, yes? Well, perhaps he'd care to join uh, Mr. Villiers and Mr. Tillinghast for uh, uh, a bit of raising of the wrist. Hmm? If he could stand to look at me. I, uh, I, I call. It's okay. And she calls. And someone picks up. Uh, hello, Mr. Larkin. Uh, you have uh, a me, Mr. Larkin. Hey, miss, Mr. Larkin, you you have uh, four. Mr. Larkin, you have four amigos here. I, Just uh, us. Oh, two. I'm sorry, two. I thought of everything. Uh, you have two of me. And she looks at you and she's like, uh, he. Uh, he sounds uh, is sick. He, he, he moaning on uh, other end of phone. I not understand uh, what he say. Uh, maybe maybe he's sick or, or tired. Oh, isn't that a shame? Uh, um, now I'm s- now. Uh, of course, friends of ours are staying in a room nearby, but he's in room. Oh, Mister Locke in the room uh, four hundred two. Yes, of, of course. Tip of my tongue. Uh, Perhaps um, someone should go up to give him his medicine. Mm-hmm. Um, I, you sure you are friends? Yes, amigos. Of course. Uh, oh. Well, we'll we'll just uh, consider that. Uh, muchas gracias, uh, señora. You know, actually, now that I'll I think about sure. it, Vaughn, I think uh, uh, De Mendoza oftentimes carries his medicine for him. If we could also have De Mendoza's. Room number, maybe we can get in there, grab it, bring it over to our other friend. She's like, he's he's in room next door, 403. But, uh, you know, I, I've been doing this long time. Uh, no funny business, right? Oh, oh no, no, I, no, uh, we're friends. Pers- I, persuade her? I, Put her at ease. As he does that, I just kind of hold up the, um, the telegram that we got that has his name on it. And our name's on it. She says, she oh, puts yeah. on these glasses. And she's like, uh, see, okay. Okay, well, no funny business. So, like, I, I call police, yeah. No, never. No funny. This is my hotel. I own it all by myself uh, after my husband died. Mm. I can poor. assure you, madam, I've never been told that I was funny. That poor man. So, leave such a beauty behind. So just, so we're now, all four of us are here? Yeah, where'd where'd you come from? Oh, I thought that we all four of us were coming in, but we were going to split off. I was confused too, yeah. That's why I thought you were all So now that that this is happening, we go, (laughs) But you could have easily given them that idea. We just like, I just kind of popped my head up from the Yeah, just go for holes up. You guys should be on top of each other in a trench coat with a hat on. Yes. Behind a palm tree in the lobby. Yeah, no, you could easily have given them that idea and maybe Margot and Feyrus are, are at the bar area, but so you're, you're nearby. You all see each other. All right. So maybe we yeah, huddle. Like um, she's like, so how do we play this? Sounds like uh, Larkin may be um, undergoing a bit of the business that, uh, that Sanchez just went through. <sighs> so Perhaps someone I mean, goes up there, checks on the old boy, while someone else remains down here, plays lookout. Mm-hmm. Right. I've got a gun. I suppose I'll go upstairs. I do not have uh, my lamp. Anymore. There's probably lamps up there, you know? <laughs> you know it's what? Nice you are right. I should go up and. You've proven your lamp acuity. You're right. I'll stay down here and uh, watch for uh, De Mendoza and uh, distract him if he comes, if he starts coming back. All right. Vaughn, what about you? Hmm. Well. Just in case there's any funny business upstairs. If it's more of the same, perhaps you'll want another set of hands? 
right? Or you would probably be the one to talk our way out of the situation. Well, I've not wished to deprive you ladies of good time. Um, very well. Be about your business, and if Mendoza comes, uh, Tillinghass and I will give him the runaround. No, I'm just going to talk to him. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the two, the two gentlemen will wait downstairs. <laughs> <laughs> well... Margo. Oh, I thought if Largo, if Larkin was upstairs and we were just like, oh, hi, uh, yeah, we're here on uh, business. I thought that there would be a, that Vaughn could help out with that. But that's okay. We could do this, the, the original plan. Oh, you guys, gotcha. you guys, if he, if he, you know, you guys can go up there saying you wanted to check on him and come up with some chicanery. Uh, that you were gonna, yeah, I'm like, yeah. I'm, I'm happy to do either. Well, yeah, we're, we're bar hopping and we want recommendations for bars. Or come Bloody. on down, have a drink. Oh, you you yeah. you smell like rot- rotting fish, and you have a slug in your throat. Oops. Mm, okay. We'll come I'll back. Take it. <laughs> we'll come back. The three of us will go up if, if uh, uh, Tillinghast stays down and is and waits for Mendoza. Oh yeah, yeah. I was just saying they could they could have that conversation too. It doesn't, doesn't matter. Happy okay. to do either. Whatever. Uh, great. So do. one of you stays as the lookout. Carter will stay as the lookout in case De Mendoza comes back. Um, and the other three of you go upstairs. Um, are you? going to check out de Mendoza's room since you assume he's not here or are you going straight to Larkin's can we do a listen at his door de Mendoza yeah mm-hmm. all right so you get up to the fourth floor yeah, there's no elevator so you're just walking up four flights of stairs uh, and you get up there and it's similarly decorated paintings some plants 401. 402, you go past Larkin's room, and there is 403, to Mendoza's room. Um, give me a. Is there a listen roll? There is. I think there is, yeah. right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's like right. 90 skill checks. I always forget what they are. I rolled a 41 under 50. Yeah. 41 under 50? Okay, what'd you get? 27, but over probably 20. Yeah. Okay. I'll spend some luck to... Wait, no. Never mind. I failed. <laughs> okay. Yeah, and you already got one success, so it was just like, yeah. anybody get a hard or an extreme? Um, so you listen, Feruz. It's silent. You don't hear shuffling. You don't hear any movement whatsoever. It's quiet as a mouse in there. If I slowly turn the doorknob just to feel if it's locked. Feels locked. Raspberries. <laughs> yeah. Rattlesnakes. What Locked are we out of here. Um, Anyone know how to jimmy a lock? <laughs> just sounds so natural coming out of you. <laughs> <laughs> know how to jimmy a lock? Uh, yeah, anybody have a, any of the three of you have locksmithing? I just no, really it's need a one for me. One point. No! Wow. Oh man, yeah. Whoops. We have um, we screwed up the teams. Okay. Oh man. <laughs> shall I shall I run down and get uh, Tillinghast? He thinks this might be more his uh his line. If he can. Um, I why not? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sure. You do that, or if you wanted to break down the door, you could do a strength check. But obviously, you would leave the. Uh, depending on how successful you were, you would leave. It would be obvious that someone tried to break in. Yeah. But yeah, again, wanna... there was a murder. <laughs> mm-hmm. And you think this might be the suspect? Um, I mean, so what I do you want to do? Break so in yeah. or go get Carter? I think I I'll, I might just like turn to you and be like, you know, lock picking's not really my line. But uh, given the make of this dorm, I could run down and get Tillinghouse, see if this is uh, his sort of business, or just kick the bloody thing in. What do you say? Well, uh, as as Nora looks at her strength roll, yeah, I could. I suppose I could. Kick, try to kick this door down. Might be, uh, might cause a little bit of a ruckus. Try it. Give it a strength it. check. See if you can right. boot it down. All right. Um, yeah, here we go. Here we go. Two I will feet. cheer from the side. Go, kick it down. I rolled a 40 under 75. So that is not, oh no, it's not an extreme success. Just a regular right. success. And I also rolled a regular ass success. All right, so the two of you time your kicks at the same nice. time, uh, and you poof, 
busts it open. You see that the wood is splintered a little bit near the you lock. Probably will notice that. <laughs> probably will notice that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but luckily, you don't see anyone inside. But it looks cool. You see a room that is almost antiseptically neat. There are no personal effects, toiletries, any changes of clothing on display. The bed is uh, neatly made and looks to have been completely unused. Are we sure this is the correct room? Is there a is there a room a door into the adjoining room? Uh, roll a luck check. That's an interesting question. Uh, hmm, fourteen. Uh, I smashed it. Uh, yeah, that's a that's an ex- a hard success. You know, Ross, it just so happens there is. Um, perhaps uh. Mendoza isn't staying in his room at all. Maybe not. And so I go up to that, uh, up to the, um, uh, the divider door and give a listen there. You go up to the divider door, you put your ear up against it, give me a listen roll. That's a failure. Failure. <gasps> it's thick, it's thicker than the other door you can't quite hear. <laughs> oh, we should just kick it down. <laughs> <laughs> well, He's smash it down. Don't smash us. it. <laughs> yep. I mean, I think so because we heard him. Didn't we hear hear him from coming well, back from the outside? Do we assume that's the door that is leading to that yeah, room? Yeah, you know that, that is. <laughs> do you know that that's the door leading into four hundred two? Because you saw already walked by the door, uh, and you know that someone picked up uh, when uh, the hotel proprietor called up to his room. Shall Someone we? That sounded sick. Um, can I just do before we bust through? Can I just spot hidden to see if there's anything in this room? Ooh, smart. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, let's do it. Oh, brutal. I um, Ooh. I yeah, I, I fail. <laughs> Forty-seven under fifty. Ninety-five. <laughs> what was it? Um, did you get there, uh, Margot? 47 under 50. 47 under 50. So you're looking at that door leading into the side room and then Vaughn is like, wait, while we're here, we should at least canvas the place. And so you're looking around and Margot finds something underneath the mattress. At first, it appears to almost be like a mask. It's six inches square, and it's made of gold. It looks like a a stylized face, maybe? It's largely made up of blocky geometrical shapes that are raised from the surface. But it's solid, and there's no eye holes. Hmm. Um, it's wild looking. Can I roll like what did I roll last time to understand like what those other gold items were? Uh, archaeology. Archaeology. Yeah. No, it must have been a praise. I thought you I have rolled one. In, I have one in archaeology. No one knew you probably rolled a one. Um, <laughs> That might yeah. have been the thing you used your ton of your luck on to get down to. Right. Yeah, I, did I use think a you rolled it. That's a, Rob, I think you're absolutely right. I think you rolled like a 13 and spent 12 luck to get it down to a one. I'll try to. I'll try it again. Does anybody else see. have archaeology in the room? Because that uh, would be. A praise I would have, tell you what it might be worth, but archaeology yeah. will tell you it's yeah. significant. I, I, I do have some points in archaeology and anthropology. All right, yeah, give me some arc rolls. Ooh, okay, I rolled a 29 over 21, so I'm going to use some luck. Yeah. Yes. There you go. Span that luck. Yep. Okay, um, that is uh, enough to know that it is... Uh, 
similar in design to artifacts that were found uh, in an area known as Tiwanaku, which was a pre-Columbian archaeological site in Western Bolivia. So maybe you remember seeing uh, stuff like this in your studies back at Miskatonic. Um, you turn it over and you see the back of this mask is completely unadorned, but it's polished to a, a, a high enough sheen that it actually can be used as like a mirror. Hmm. Now, does it look similar in the raised geometric shapes to everything else that we've seen? Or is this different? Um, it is similar. It's hard to say if it's exactly the same. Okay. Um, but yeah, that's, there seems to be a theme there. Right. Well, this seems to be from the area mm -hmm. where we're headed. Pre-Columbian. Yes, the more I learn about this Mendoza fellow, the less I trust him. So strange. The light from the coming in through the window is like bouncing off the mirror, and it's just like uh, every every where you move it, it's just shining this weird light all over the room as you guys are talking. I tell you what, I don't want to do, Troy. I don't want to put this thing to my face. Oh, oh, oh. It's all right now. It's, it's your life. Hmm. But if somebody else wants to try it, <laughs> oh, oh, Kate wants to try it. <laughs> but should she make Margot do that? Marco. Look how, how shiny the inside is. It's all about. We'll just Beautiful tease a little bit. <laughs> Margot picks it up and holds it and like looks into it, like the mirrored back of it, and like just looks at it. Does she feel fine? All right. So Margot picks it up and just looks into the mirrored back of it. For a couple seconds. Yeah. Oh God. You guys see Margot look at it, and your hand starts shaking as you're staring into the mirror. Give me a power roll. Oh. Oh. <gasps> okay. All right. Oh God. Yes. Oh God. Okay. Power, power roll. Four. Under <gasps> E5. What? You're a machine. He has too much My brother power. bought me this dice for Christmas. Thank you so much. <laughs> a four under, so an extreme success. <laughs> All right, so as you're staring into the mirror, you guys just see Margot's hand shaking. But as you look in, you start to see scenes unfold, Margot. And the first thing you see is an ancient stepped pyramid on a plateau somewhere. And the pyramid just breaks apart and crumbles as greasy white tendrils dripping with huge maggots begin to reach up and out from the remains of the pyramid. And then they just cover the whole mirror. You almost feel like they're crawling on the surface of the mirror, but you're not scared. You're just like, it's almost like you're driving these visions. And then the maggots dissipate and go away. And then you see them reform on the ground somewhere, wriggling again. And then they turn into people dancing thousands and thousands of people, men and women of every race, but they're not just dancing, they're like having sex with each other and killing each other in this massive blood orgy. And as it pans out, you just see thousands of people involved in this enormous blood orgy atop a huge mountain. And you just, you come out of it and you let the mirror go and it falls onto the bed. And then he's just like, careful there, Margo. Don't, don't know how priceless that is. What's that? What? You what? To see what? a ghost. What? Um. Let's put this. Put put this back on, on under the match. Uh. Let's. Uh. Lark Larkin. We need to see how he's doing. Um. Let's put this back. Right. Too right. Shall we? Too right. Give it the old no. one too. I suppose so. 
We, 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 do we ever try the knob of this door? Does it just open? <laughs> you have not tried the knob. Let's try that knob. Sure. Try, try that, that knob. knob. Unlike the knob into Demondozen's room, this one turns. Oh. <laughs> right on the verge of kicking it down. It's like, hold on, wait, hold on. <laughs> I, you know, let's I just try the, the <laughs> refusal to just knock because you, you know that guy's in there. <laughs> yeah. Let's try this the conventional way. Uh, yeah, let's crack it and slowly give it a little sneak peep, even though we p- busted down the door of the neighboring room. Do you want to do a stealth or do you want to just kind of just live, live dangerously? Fling it open. Fling. We've right, already so kicked the door open. Let's just say yeah. you open it. You just open it and, and crack, but without the actual, more of a flavor stealth. You look in there, and in contrast to Mendoza's room, Larkin's room is chaos. It's very unpleasant. There are suitcases spilling soiled clothing all over the floor. There's personal effects covering almost every surface that you can see through the crack in the door. And right when you open it, you get a a whiff of the smell in there. And it just reeks of, of stale sweat and sickness, as well as that rotten meat smell that you smell during dinner at Bar Cordano. You I also I see. Want some of Tillinghast perfume right about now? <laughs> I don't know you need. The My perfumes see, always are Carter. burning. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Cut to Carter in the lobby, just smelling one of them <laughs> sweetly. Yeah, and he's tra- and he's talking to the woman. He's like, and that's how in 1918, Boston Red Sox. Okay. A triumph that is sure to be repeated quite soon. <laughs> <laughs> well, the team like this, they'll win every year. Uh just past all of this mayhem, you see a figure like kicked back on a chair in the far corner of the room. But with the crack in the door, you can't really can't really make out who it is and what's going on there. I think maybe this is where um, I just want to create a sense of plausible deniability. Um, Larkin, old chap. Um, we've, we've created so much noise, I feel like that sneaking <laughs> is absurd at this point. It's like, uh, Larkin, old chap. Uh, heard from the lady downstairs that you were in a bit of dire straits. Once you weren't yourself on the, on the telephone. Thought we'd come in and take a look at you. Thought you'd had an accident, old man. As I uh, come closer and maybe, like, draw the, the shades so whatever, like, dying light of the day will reveal who is in this chair. And so. you also hear a very small click mm-hmm. from my gun in click. the shadows. <laughs> so you peep through the crack, see this, and then say, hello, Larkin, as you open the door and look in, and you see that it is, in fact, Larkin kicked back on this chair, but he's like in a semi-state of consciousness and there's two things that jump out at you immediately one his sleeves are rolled up completely and you see that discoloration that you saw on his wrists uh those veins are discolored in black running all the way up his arm and in his current state his shirt is more open so you get a better look at what looked like some sort of tattoo on his chest. And you see that it looks like a large, ragged spiral that's radiating out from his sternum. And it ends like just above his diaphragm where it connects to a stylized, misshapen humanoid figure with large outstretched hands that appear to end in claws. And he opens his eyes and looks at you. And we'll see you next week. Uh. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, baby! Storytelling 101, always end on the chest reveal. (laughs) Ooh, I'll be thinking about that all week. (laughs) Oh, great job, everybody. We'll see you next week for more chaos! Chaos.